so excited about today's topic. And the reason is because I've always loved studying leadership. I've read lots of leadership books. It's something in my corporate career that I love to focus on because I was always very interested in helping other people achieve their full potential. And as I think about it, I think there are so many parallels with being a leader and managing and leading your own career. And, and actually this even works for a job search because in the end, you're in control. And whether that's a job search or the next stage of your career, uh, your promotion, however you wanna elevate it, you must become the leader and you must take charge of your own career. And particularly in a job search, it gets a little crazy because we're so used to doing things for other people. We're so used to leading, collaborating, and doing all the things. Um, and it's so much easier when we're doing it on behalf of our employer that when you get to be in a job search or when you really set your sights on next stages for your career, you now actually have to move into the space where you're doing this stuff for yourself. So I'm very excited to present some thoughts on this with you today because I do believe that it's gonna change what happens uh, in your career and your job search from this point forward. So let's get started. I was inspired by a book by John C. Maxwell called The 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader. And I've picked 12 out of the 21 here. Uh, because I think these are very key qualities to have when you're leading your own career. And let's just assume that I'm talking job search throughout this because, you know, your job search is just a moment in your career. And all of these qualities matter. Your character, your commitment, your communication, courage, discernment, focus, taking initiative. That's a huge one listening, um, positivity, responsibility, security. And by security, that doesn't mean financial security. It means feeling secure in yourself and what you bring to the table and having a vision. Now, when leaders uh, exemplify these qualities, they be, are becoming the person others want to follow. When you're leading your own career, you're becoming the person others want to hire by exhibiting these qualities and developing these qualities in yourself. So look at these characteristics, look at these qualities and think about ways that you display these and really hold yourself accountable to this because these are the qualities that are going to truly make a difference in where you go from here. So. I wasn't making this about the 12 things you need to do. Um, I talked about it in the title slide that this is three easy steps. So let's get into the three easy steps that encapsulate all of these qualities. First, how to be the leader of your career does boil down to these three things. Getting clear on your value, practicing targeted constraint, and being consistent at every level. And I'm gonna dive into each of these in greater detail so you understand how to apply them. Getting clear on your value. What I mean by this is it's about your innate behavioral strengths. This is the how that helps you produce the what. This is so important because the how you do things goes with you everywhere. So whether you're an entry level position, middle management, senior management, or executive, when you're clear on your how, it's so much easier to understand how to produce the what. Your how, your behavioral strengths, your transferable skills, if you will, those all come together with your practical experience, your hard skills to produce the what. Um, consistently and successfully. Let's talk a little bit more about this. These are about the behaviors 
that will help you succeed. Now I've listed 30 transferable skills here and there are, there are many more, believe me. Um, one of the tools I use with all of my clients, whether they've hired me to write their resume or we're in a full on customized six month career transition program, it all boils down to the behaviors that help you succeed. Are you analytical? Are you attentive? Are you flexible? Um, is follow through one of your qualities? Are you innovative? Knowing these things about yourself and how they show up for you in the workplace is really key because this becomes now about knowing your value. When you understand these strengths and this value that you bring to the table, it makes it much easier to describe why you are capable of doing that next level in your career. You know, maybe you just lost your job and you know that you don't want to go back to the same thing. You want to move up. You want to take this moment in time to move up in your career. Understanding all of this about yourself and how these show up for you in solving the pain points that are listed in a job description this is how you'll be able to communicate. This is how you'll be able to create that dotted line uh, between your how and your accomplishments. When you create that dotted line, you're now creating a picture of what you look like in that next role, whether that's getting hired um, straight up or whether that is that movement of a career, that forward movement of elevating your career from one role to another. So dive into this, pause the video, really understand what all of this looks like for you, circle the ones that are applicable or write them down and think about what this means and what this means into your ability to create great results and success of the past, but most importantly, the implications around the success that you'll create in the future. This is what knowing your value is all about. Next is practicing targeted constraint. I love the image of the railroad track here because, you know, we have a lot of curves. We have a lot of windy roads in our career path, but this image of the track is constraint. It's keeping that train on a path within constrained rails, if you will, that are keeping it doing what it does best. It's best staying constrained. Um, this is about knowing and staying in your strength zone because when you know how to do that, that's where the joy, the genius, and the magic is. That's how you create new opportunities for yourself. So when we talk about picking a target that aligns to your value, I'm speaking of target, not as this, uh, despite the fact this shows a bullseye, the bullseye is more about the constraint than it is the target itself. Think of your target like your mission. It's actually bigger than a goal and it's fed by your strengths that value we talked about earlier. It outlasts, it provides momentum. Your target may change as your career progresses. Your target may be to land that job, to become a director, to move from director to VP. Your targets change, but it's always aligned with your mission. I really love the way Donald Clifton puts it in his book, Soar With Your Strengths. So I'm just gonna read a little passage here. When strengths are driven by mission, a circle is created. Strengths feed mission. For example, a salesperson's desire to contribute to the world by selling medical supplies is a mission, but it's put into practice by his or her sales strengths. Sales strengths, sidebar, come from your innate behavioral strengths. 
We know the people that are great salespeople because they, they naturally exhibit the behaviors that help them do that. Okay, back to the quote. The successful use of these strengths creates a pleasant feeling of satisfaction in the salesperson, which reinforces the sense of mission. Now, what's so interesting about this, and Donald doesn't get into it, but this is your brain chemistry. This is how it works. When you are using a strength and you feel the pleasure of using that strength, you are tapping into your brain chemistry, which helps reinforce that action, which again reinforces a strength. And it all comes together to help you um, move uh, within your mission from target to target that you have in your career. Love the way that works. This is practicing constraint. It's knowing your strengths. It's understanding your mission and staying on target, staying constrained to doing the things that are in your strength zone. When you know how to do that, then the opportunities that present themselves are amazing because now you can see yourself moving from place to place, uh, making greater contributions um, in the workplace. This is where that comes from. Now the third step is being consistent at every level. Now, you may think being consistent has to do with being disciplined, with being persistent. Um, some of those qualities may come into play, but this is actually more about managed thoughts. Managed thoughts are the origins of how you feel, act, and everything you create. It's so, so powerful, my friends. Now, let's talk about creating results by being consistent. Moving forward, as we know, we've learned from lots of great thought leaders, Tony Robbins and others, that moving forward is about taking massive action. But we all get to this place where we feel undisciplined. Uh, our actions are not consistent. They're inconsistent. And when we think it's about our willpower and that we can just will ourselves and grit ourselves um, to taking more massive action, it really only leads to burnout. And it's because we're not addressing the real issue. The real issue are the thoughts you're thinking, or as Viktor Frankl puts it, the meaning that you're attaching. So when you don't like your actions, when your actions are not what you want them to be. I want you to reverse engineer that back to your feelings and thoughts. So say for instance that you have a goal to um, reach out to uh, your manager or reach out to another group inside the organization or apply for that job. But anyway, it, re it means that you've got to step out of your comfort zone. You've got to talk to somebody about what you want and you just find that you're not able to do it no matter how much you think about it and how much you try to will yourself into doing it you just can't make yourself do it well it's because of how you're feeling um, maybe you're feeling discouraged uh, maybe you're feeling um, apprehensive maybe you're feeling imposter syndrome like i right? Uh, maybe you're feeling inadequate. All of those feelings are being driven by thoughts. So when you feel a feeling of inadequacy or imposter syndrome, take it another step back. What is the thought that's creating that feeling? A thought that is creating a feeling of inadequacy might be who in the heck do I think I am to apply for this job? I've never done anything like that before. Uh, no one's going to be taking me seriously. Um, definitely not thoughts that are serving you. So, of course, when you think a thought that no one's going to take you seriously and it makes you feel inadequate, why would you, why would you take action? Um, your brain is just protecting you from taking that action because 
it, it's going to result in, you know, in feeling dumb and feeling stupid and feeling inadequate. So reverse engineering it back. The great news is, is that our greatest power lies in our ability to choose our thoughts. So instead of thinking something like, um, nobody's going to take me seriously, you know, choose a thought that makes you feel better. Choose a thought like, this is the perfect time for me. I have all the experience I need. Um, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, those types of thoughts will create feelings that are more empowered, that give you a sense of ease, a sense of certainty. Those are some of my favorite feelings. Think thoughts that make it feel easy and make you feel certain about the end result. Because when you feel certain and uh, you feel adequate and sufficient, then those feelings drive an action, will give you what you need to step out of your comfort zone. And keep going until you find a feeling that drives action. For me, I've got to think that it's going to be fun because thinking something's fun makes me feel good um, and makes me take action. So find the right equation for you. Don't feel like you have to get overcomplicated with it. You can actually pick uh, the same feeling over and over again and the same thought over and over again to create that feeling if it makes you take action. Um, so go, go for it from that respect. It's about managing your thoughts because our thoughts do create our results. It might sound woo woo to you, but it's a, it's a principle that actually works because thoughts that create feelings that result in action or that cause you to take action creates a result that matches your thought. If your thought is I can do this. Guess what? Your result will be you are doing it. Love it. So how do you be the leader of your career? You get clear on your value. What are your strengths? What are your transferable skills? The how that creates the what? Practicing targeted constraint. That's aligning those strengths to a mission that serves one target after another along your career path and being consistent at every level, starting with your thoughts and managing your thoughts in such a way that they create feelings that drive positive, massive action so that you can create the results you want. Well, listen, a lot of people who I share this concept with, um, a certain percentage of them want to work with me, you know, and if that's you and you want to have the career you want, then take advantage of a customized program. I have a seven week program for that lightning strike transformation. I have a three month program or a six month program, all customized to your specific needs so that you can create the career you want. If that's you, then just, just email me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what's, what's working and what's not working. And we'll put it together in a way that helps you absolutely transform the trajectory of your career or of your job search. And the other way to get in touch with me is just follow me on LinkedIn. You can, you can look me up with my name. You can follow my hashtag, Strategic Elisa. I'm there for you, and I will help you um, apply these principles so that you can create that career you want. Imagine what it's going to look like three years from now when you apply these principles and you start taking control and leading your own career. Wow, it's going to be awesome. All right, everybody, good chatting with you. Talk to you soon.